So let's start by installing a new Laravel project. So we're going to say new FL2 flux. We're going to take the jet stream one and we're going to go live wire. And I guess we'll take dark mode, email verification, pest, and we'll let our project build and we'll create a database. MySQL, yes. We'll run the migrations. We will then jump into our project and do a quick git init. So this will initialize an empty repository for us. We'll clear this. Then we'll open our project inside of an editor and check it out in the browser. Okay, so inside of our editor, here's our Laravel project. We're just going to head to the package.json file. So what that looks like is this file down here. All right, now that we're here, you're gonna notice that we have Tailwind CSS 3.4, and we wanna get this up to 4.0. But before we do that, we're gonna add a watch flag here. And what this does is whatever changes we make in our editor, it'll also be reflected in the browser. So let's check out what our project looks like in the browser and everything looks to be okay. So we're all set up. So before we jump back into our editor, we're gonna check out Flex UI. And we can see that Flex UI has received the new design and we're currently at version two as of this week. So we've got some essential components and uh, about 16 in all of them, I guess. And then we have some pro components. But for now, we're just gonna install Flex UI into our current project. So let's go to the docs. And the command is composer require Livewire Flux, but there are some prerequisites. We need Laravel 10 or later, uh, Livewire 3.5, and we also need Tailwind 4 or later. So let's see what version of Livewire we have. So let's go to the composer.json file. And it looks like we are 3.5 or higher, so we met that requirement. Let's jump back to the package.json file. So we need to update Tailwind. So let's open our terminal, and the command is npx, Tailwind upgrade. So now that we're back in our package.json file, we'll see that we're at Tailwind version 4.08. We've added a few more dependencies. Let's check our folder structure. So we have this new post CSS config file. Our package.json file was updated. The Tailwind config.js file was also removed. And if we go to resources and we check CSS and we go to apps here, we'll see that this was modified to support Tailwind version four. And in addition, some component styles were also updated. Okay, so we're good. So let's just jump back into our browser, do a quick refresh and everything still looks the same. All right, so on to installing Flux. So we're gonna copy this. Composer require Livewire Flux. We're gonna go back into our project and we're gonna open up our terminal and we're gonna paste in the command. So the one we installed is just the regular version of Flux. It's not the pro version as we haven't activated a license and this should have the 16 available components that are ready for you to use. Let's get back to our editor. And we will check our composer.json file to see that we have version two of Flux installed. Now, in order to take advantage of Flux components, we're going to have to add two directives to our layout files. Now we can approach this in a couple ways. We could head over to our apps directory and in the view folder, we can add a couple view components. And as you can see, we have one called app layout and another one called guest. And what they'll do is they'll get the contents that represents the components. So for instance, down here in our resources, under views, under layouts, we'll see that we have the corresponding view. So app.blade.php corresponds to this class up here. And this class returns a view called layouts.app. And the guest layout returns this view here. So we could do that, but rather than make it really complicated, what we're gonna do instead is we're just gonna close this and we're gonna head to our routes file. And you see that there's a web.php file. And this route, actually points towards this view, welcome.blade.php, which is actually this view right here. So we're gonna use this one for now, instead of creating a view component and then adding a layout file here. So if you're following along, this welcome.blade.php view is corresponding to this view over here is what you see in the browser. So for instance, if we were to go here and inside the body tag, we remove the contents inside here, and then we head back over to our browser and we do a refresh, you'll see that everything's missing. And before we add the directives, we can take a look at the app.php file, and you see that Livewire adds its styles here, and then towards the bottom, it adds its scripts here. So if you were using an older version of Flux, you would add the Flux styles here, and then towards the bottom, you would add the Flux scripts. So let's add the correct directives for this. So this one can stay the same, but up here in Flex 2, we're gonna add this directive. And then we're gonna copy both of these and we're gonna add them to our welcome blade. We're gonna place these two here. And then we're gonna go back, 
and we're going to borrow this from the app.blade.php file, and we're just going to place it right here. So essentially, this welcome.blade.php file should have both directives, the Livewire styles, the Flux appearance, the Livewire scripts, and the Flux scripts. Now in Flux version 2, in the documentation, they also recommend that most of their components, and it's optional at the end of the day, uses this inter font. So we can copy that, and you can see here this is using Figtree, and we're going to replace this one with the inter font family. And then inside of our app.css file, we'll jump back to the documentation, and we're going to import these two items right here. So since we already have Tailwind 4 installed, we're just adding these configuration files right after tailwind.css import. And this one here is just a custom variant for dark mode. And I'll show you that a little bit later. We'll jump back into our browser and we'll grab the font family here and we'll paste it inside the at themes layer. So right here, we normally have the default here. We're gonna replace this with the inter font that Flex version two recommends. Then we'll jump back to our welcome file. And in here, we're gonna have this dark BG black and the text when it's in dark mode, it's gonna be white. But for now, we're just gonna set our background with Tailwind CSS, we're gonna set that to white. And we're gonna go grab our first flex component. And this one's gonna be dark mode. So we're gonna scroll down to the first example and we're just gonna copy this toggle button. So we're gonna copy the code, jump back over to our welcomeblade.php file, and we're gonna paste this in right here. We're gonna jump back into our browser, refresh, and you'll see that we have this little icon that's like a moon. And if we hit it, we can toggle dark mode off and on. Now, it doesn't look too great right now, but we're gonna fix that. But with this, we definitely know that Flux 2 and its components are working. So let's head back to our editor. So let's add some of the free components that come with Flux 2. Back over here in the browser, we're gonna jump down to headers. And header is one of the free components that we have with version two. So more than likely, you're gonna see this in Laravel 12 and the new upcoming layout files. So we have a secondary variation down here with the sidebar. And if we check out the sidebar component, we have a variant header here, and then we have a secondary header option. So let's go with this one. So I'm gonna click on code. I'm gonna copy this to my clipboard. I'm gonna jump back over into my project. And we're just gonna make some room here below the body. And we're gonna paste this in here. So I wanna note that we already have a body section here and in the demo, it just adds flux scripts again and adds this body section. So let's remove this and we're gonna scroll to the top and we can see that also in the demo, it adds a head section with flux appearance, which we already have, and then an additional body section. So we're gonna grab this and we're just gonna paste it in our body section. So this will give our page 100 VH. Okay, so let's remove this because we already have styles applied to our body tag. Okay, let's build this. We're gonna open up our terminal. We're gonna run npm run build. We're gonna clear this, and then we're gonna jump back into our browser to see what this looks like. Let's give the browser a refresh. So in our browser, we now have the exact styles or layout that was in the demo. All right, so let's go to light mode for a second, and let's make this make sense. I mean, this is really kind of odd over here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to our sidebar demo inside of Flex 2, and I'm just gonna swap out the header. So I'm gonna just go to the header example under layouts here. And I think, um, you know what? I like this one. We're just gonna borrow this one. So we're gonna go demo, code, and we're gonna copy this to our clipboard. And then we're gonna jump back over into our editor. And we're gonna find the section that we wanna edit. So let's just clean this up a little bit. So the part that we want to replace is this header right here. So what we're gonna do is if we paste this demo in, the item that we copied from our clipboard, it's gonna give us the same thing. So it's gonna give us like, you know, extra content that we actually don't even need. So let's delete all this. And this part is the new header section that I wanna replace. So I'm gonna keep this part. And I'm gonna remove this as well. Okay, so old header, and this is the new one. So I'm gonna delete this one here, and the, you'll see that we have our sidebar, we have our header, and we have our main section here. And then we have the dark mode icon that we initially started with. So let's just clean this up a little bit. Okay, nothing too crazy. I just added some comments uh, to make this make a little more sense. So this is our dark mode icon. We're gonna cut this and we're gonna jump into our header navigation, the one that we just added. And we're gonna scroll down to this section right here. It just has all these icons to the right. And we're gonna add the dark mode icon just right below this. And then let's jump back into our browser to see what this looks like. So in the browser, we have the new header layout that we added and we put our dark mode icon over here. Just makes a little more sense. I mean, this is okay. We have like a duplicate brand here. I mean, you can keep it here, but I'm just gonna remove it. So that's right here under header, brand, we'll just delete this one, go back into our browser, do a quick refresh, 
and we're back to this. So I don't know about you guys, but this is a great starting point if you're starting with a dashboard layout for something in your backend project. Now, you get a lot of functionality just right out of the box, and we just basically just copied and pasted some code in there, and I mean, you can add the functionality later, but I mean, this is a great time saver. All right, let's just check to see how this looks on mobile. So in the mobile layout, we have our profile dropdown, search icon, dark mode icon. Then we have our drawer over here, which gives us our mobile menu, which consists of some of the same things in our desktop menu. Now in this layout alone, I would say that about a third of the free components are already covered. So let's just jump back into our editor. Okay, so what we're gonna do next is we're gonna go down here and we're gonna go to the main section and we're gonna create a series of cards. So a section that has like four cards. So um, we're gonna try to shoot for four columns. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to like mimic a card like this. So it's gonna have a border, it's gonna have like a header section and a footer section. And then we're gonna place the available components that are available for free inside these cards. And the reason for that is because if we go to cards here, uh, flux cards are a pro component. So if I was to just copy this uh, flux card component, and then I go to the section over here inside of my app, and I paste that in, I go back to the browser, and I try to refresh the browser, I'll get an error and it says it's unable to locate this component and that's because we haven't set up the pro option or haven't paid for these components. So let's remove this. And I'm gonna use Emmet to get this done. This is not really a Tailwind CSS uh, lesson, but I did do Emmet on the channel and you guys should check that out. It'll actually help you when it comes to laying out HTML tags and uh, Tailwind CSS classes. So I'm just gonna give you an idea. So I'm gonna have a section tag and it's gonna have a Tailwind class of PX6. It's gonna also have a Tailwind class of PY6. And inside that section tag, that's what this chevron means. So we're going into the tag, so a child inside this tag. We're gonna create a div and it's gonna be grid. Then at the lowest or mobile level, we're gonna have a grid and it's gonna be calls and we're gonna have one. So the cards will stack on top of each other. They're gonna have a gap of six. And for any other device, uh, small and above, we're gonna give a grid calls and we're gonna make it four. So four column grid. You can see this typing this out just kind of makes it a little bit quicker to get your layout or your template set up. So I'm not gonna go through this step by step, but I will show you what it looks like when it's finished. So I'm gonna show you how I'm doing the first card and then I'm gonna just repeat this process for the remaining cards with the remaining components. So for instance, inside of the header section here, we're gonna go grab the button component. So if we go to flux and we go to button, you'll see that this is the component here. If you wanna see the variants, you're gonna to have to log in and create an account in order to see those variants. So I'm gonna grab the variants of these buttons and then paste them in. And I'm gonna see what this looks like in dark mode. This looks good. I'm gonna fill in the rest of these and show you all the components with this layout. All right guys, here's our 16 plus free components. We have our buttons with different variants. We have our badges here. We have our breadcrumbs over here uh, with different variants and different layouts. We also have our switches here. Um, down to the bottom here, we have our dropdowns. It's the same as these dropdowns here, just a little bit of variation in the dropdowns as well. And we have our icons, uh, same as the icons being used over here in the sidebar, but different sizes and different styles. Over here, we have our inputs and we have validation inputs. We have our date inputs. We have different variation styles on our inputs here. Um, I didn't add the file upload input, but you guys can check that one out on your own. And over here we have a modal and it pops up in the center. And here we have an input that's wrapped around a field. Over here we have our tool tips. And I just put the sidebar, uh, it's a component, but I just kind of embedded a shorter version of it right here. And on this side we have our checkbox. Over here we have a separator. And I believe there was another separator demonstration just right up here in between these two. Over here we have our nav bar. And in this case, I only have like two items in the nav bar and we can see it's similar to this over here as well. And we have select. And over here we have one of our radio components. It's got different variations. Uh, you guys can check that out as well. And at the very bottom, we have our text field and it can be expanded vertically. I mean, it's a decent amount of components that you get out of the box for free including the light and dark mode uh, functionality. 
There's actually one more thing I want to show you guys. And if you stuck around this long and you enjoyed this video, don't forget to support it, give it a like and subscribe to the channel. Flex 2 has the ability to add a theme style to your component. And I'm going to pick rows. I'm going to use the tool to generate a theme. So what that's going to do is going to give you the accent color, foreground and content of the theme. So we're just going to copy this whole entire thing. And we're going to jump back into our project. And just right below here, we're going to add this. And we're just going to cut out the font and place it right in here as well. I'm just going to remove this one. So we're going to compile this again. So we'll do a quick build. So if you check, you can see some of our components have a theme attached to them and it's based on the color that I've chosen. And if you go down to something like say the notifications or the checkbox, you can see those things applied. And even on our modal, some of the buttons have been themed as well. And we'll check this out in dark mode and we can see some of the theming has also been added. So certain components get themes. So uh, let me know what you guys think about this. If you wanna see more tutorials like this, I'm actually going to check out the pro components in an upcoming video. And I definitely want to check out some of the layouts. So some of the styles that are coming up. So for like logins and different things like that. So I think I'll do this in a future video. So uh, that's it for this one, guys. Take care and I will see you guys in the next one. Thank you for watching. I hope you found that useful. Please leave me your thoughts and comments. Do check out the description below for additional resources. And if you're looking for additional content, I highly recommend that you watch the next upcoming video.